two like this. Let us look at the word of God in James chapter four, verse thirteen to seventeen. Come now, you who say, "Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit," yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you are to say, "If the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that." As it is. You boast in your arrogance; all such boasting is evil. Therefore, whoever knows what is good, but does not do, has sinned. For life is but a mist, so don't depend on ourselves, but to depend and trust in the Lord only. Do not be self-dependent. For life. Because life is frail, don't be smug. Because life is frail, we do not know what will happen in our life. The word of God says, there are some who say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? We do not know. Ten minutes from now, how our life will be. Don't even say how tomorrow will be or next year will be. These businessmen were very proud of themselves and see that they will wake up tomorrow and they will peacefully go to a town, another town, and their、uh, business will be successful and grow. And in a year, they will make profit and be rich. And the government will not take a big chunk out of it to give to the poor. They confirm this because the future of the future, yet the future it lies outside of their control. The young people can even leave this life before the old elders, right? So we do not know when we will leave this life. And we need to look and consider about the quickness of life, and do not waste the days of our life. You plan your life as if we will forever be young, have a good memory, and be healthy. But the Word of God says that to be proud as so is evil, and we know that life is very short. So short that the word of God lets us see that, for you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. We see that water that、um, evaporates from a cup of tea or coffee, it evaporates up into the air and then it no longer lasts, no longer exists. Life is like that. It's like a rainbow through the window. And Moses had、um, spoken about the shortness of life, and he sees it as the grass in the fields. In the morning, it grows, and then they cut it. In Psalm ninety, verse ten, the years of our life are seventy, or even by reason of strength, eighty. But their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone. And we fly away. When we are young, we see that the days and the time is long. I remember when I was young, I kept on hoping, hoping for New Year's, and it didn't come. And now, when we prepare for one Christmas, the next Christmas comes right away. It's so fast. And the older we get, the months and days fly away really quickly. We just ate. New Year, celebrate New Year's, and now another New Year. In verse twelve of Psalm ninety, so teach us the, to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Next week is my birthday. To count my days, I have about four thousand 
500 days, I will get to 70 years old. And if I got willing to live up to then, then I only have 655 days left. And if you count the months, uh, it's about 155 months. Not much. May the Lord give us wisdom so that we can use our days for His um, for His glory. And we see that life will end. It will not last forever. We know that life will end. Calamities, disasters will cause a lot of people to lose their lives. In the last uh, storm, I know at least two people has passed away. Uh, a 70-year-old man was um, poor by the the storm that uh, drowned, and then a young kid. Uh, he saw that the the rock was blocking the drainage, and so he tried to, to um, push that rock away, but it landed on him, and he died. He was 16 years old, and we see wars and battles in Syria, um, America, and Russia just um, bombing the area, and. Thousands of people have died. And this morning, I watched the news just a little bit. I saw a person, a man, 50-year-old man in Davie. He was running around the road, and a car ran and hit him. And so he died. So we don't know when our life will end, but we know for sure it will end. Someone said there are two certainties. There's that you pay tax and that you would die. As has been established, each one of us has died to die and then stand at the judgment. So our life is fast and very short, and then it will end. So we don't have, have any reason for us to be proud. We can't say, tomorrow I will do this and that, and I will be successful, and I will enjoy. But that, like that rich man say, oh, I have been successful, and so I will build up a bigger storage house and then I will retire and sit and enjoy and then God says you fool if I take your soul tonight who will you leave your inheritance to life is a mist so do not be proud and be dependent on ourselves but to submit to the Lord be submissive because God is sovereign he is sovereign Last week, we learned that God is one who has the authority to judge, and so we need to submit to the judgment of God. Do not criticize or judge one another or accuse one another, but forgive one another and let God judge, for He knows all things, and He is righteous, and He will judge uh, justly. So we need to submit to the judgment of of God. And today, we are to be submissive to God's sovereignty. For God wants us to live. And if the Lord wills, He will. we will live and do this or that. For His will is above all. For He is the one that is sovereign and holding all authority. We need to submit authority. God is sovereign. That means we have no right above Him or authority above Him. What does this mean? This does not mean that we do not, uh, the businessmen don't plan for the future or that they don't try to make profits. The Lord taught us that we need to plan for the future in Luke. 14, 28 to 32 teaches us this. To plan financially is a good steward, one who knows how to use what God has given to us to rely on the Lord and to do according to the principles of the Bible. The wise will save up for the future. In Proverbs teaches us this, teaches us that we need to be like an ant. The ant doesn't not have a leader, but does he knows it knows to store up for the winter, and the Lord wants us to be like that. We, he does not want us to hoard and not give to others. 
We need to know to offer to God and help the poor and to、uh, store up for the days when we are of age and cannot care for ourselves. The Bible encourages us to be diligent in our work and through that make profit. He taught us that. He does not want us to be lazy. He said, Those who are lazy, go to work. To do what? So that you will have money, so that you will have in order to care for yourself and to have in order to help the poor. The Word of God tells us that in 1 Thessalonians, He says that we are to be diligent and not lazy. So it's not that God doesn't want us to work, He wants us to work. But here is that these people plan for the future without God. They lived as if they don't need God in their life. They are practical atheists. Their mouth says that there is a God, but they practice as if there is no God. They plan so. They don't submit to the sovereignty of God. They are proud and self dependent and have their own plans and see that their, the, the war warranty or guarantee of their finances. They don't have to care about much. They have it on the bank and they do not rely on God but rely on their business and their work. And they say that I will have it. I will be rich in one year. I will work and I have the power. I have the、uh, wisdom and the ability to do it. But do they have the future in their hands? Everything that, ha that ha occurs is according to their plans. We know. That is not so. Everything is in the hands of God. God causes rain and causes shine, sunshine. We can plant, but it is God that、uh, causes it to grow. If God does not allow, then everything that we do is in vain. We can save up $100,000, $200,000, but just one illness. Everything would disappear. We cannot rely on anything that we have, but we need to rely on the Lord. If the Lord wills, this is what it says here. It's not that when we talk about the plans for the future that we have, we say, that if the Lord wills. But all the time, we must have the spirit that if the Lord wills, I will do this or that. The Spirit of submission to the sovereignty of God. We need to realize that if the Lord wills and allows, then what we plan will occur. And when we read the Bible, especially when we read about the Apostle Paul, he often uses the phrase, if the Lord wills. When we talk about the future in Acts 8 21, Uh, 1 Corinthians 4 19, Romans 1:10. In Acts 8 21, the Apostle Paul、uh, left them and said, If the Lord wills, I will return to you. And then he went down to the boat to go to Ephesus. And so we see that not all the time. That talking about the future, he would say, If the Lord wills. We see in Romans、uh, 28 and in Acts 19 21, after those things occurred, Paul said, After I go there, I will have to go to Rome also. He did not use the phrase, If the Lord wills, but he always placed himself under the sovereignty of God. God wants us to have. A spirit in our mindset that if the Lord wills, I will do this or that. That is the mindset in all aspects of our life. We always have to realize our limitations and to rely on the Lord and His sovereign purpose in all aspects of our life. Sometimes we can say, if the Lord wills, but always we need to have. The spirit or the mindset that if the Lord wills, always submitting to the sovereignty of God. When we speak about 
the guarantee of the future. We know that our future is in the hands of the Lord, right? There was one time when I was invited to go to a, a workshop on insurance, and they shared how you can have financial security, and they say there's buy term and invest the difference. That is, don't worry, buy life uh, insurance. Just buy term insurance, and whatever is left over, use that money to invest. And when you have enough, then you can have the financial security. And after they hearing them share about that, I was driving home, and I considered, um, of course. I have to make profit for my family for the future, for this is what the Lord teaches, and we need to care, uh, take care of the uh, old age. For at that time, we don't have the help yet. But there is no guarantee about financial security. For we do not know what will happen, and we can not take care of everything that will happen. Our faith, my faith, needs to be placed in God. That's how I thought. Do you agree? Only God, God holds our future, and if the Lord wills and we could still live, I would do this or that. And the Lord is one who is sovereign over all. He is not just the Lord of Sundays. Not only when we come to worship Him on Sundays, but He is the Lord of Monday to Saturday also. He is not just the Lord of our worship, but He is also the Lord of our nail salon, of our workplace, of our、uh, school, of our house. He is our Lord. He has the sovereignty over our life, all aspects of our life, not just one aspect, spiritual aspects, but all aspects of our life. He is Lord. He reigns over all the activities of the church and also of your personal well-being. In, at the church, as well as your personal home, home, Jesus is the Lord over all, or else He is not Lord at all. He must be the Lord of all of our life. He is the Lord in our meeting place and in our bedroom. Our life must show that our, the Lord, is the master of our workplace, not us. Not that we are the master of our workplace, but the Lord is. Not that you are the master of your house, but the Lord is the master of your house. When we have to、um, do the business of our work, the Lord must be our Lord, and we have to say, "If the Lord wills, and I live, I will do this and that in my workplace." That is how God is sovereign. Some people, they live as if they don't have the Lord in their life, and they decide on their own everything. They by themselves buy a house. They choose their career. They choose their spouse, and then after they have planned it all out, they pray, "Lord, bless my plan so that it will succeed." That is, I want it, and now God, you do it for me. But no. Everything must be under the sovereignty of God. We know that to exalt ourselves is evil, and so that is the reason why we need to submit to the authority of God. The self-dependence and proudness. Today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. In verse thirteen. He says that these are the things that we do in the future, but we do not touch God at all.、It、has nothing to relate to God, and so the Lord, of, the Word of God, addresses this as it is. You boast in your arrogance; all such boasting is evil. We need to submit to the Lord, for boasting is evil. To be arrogant are those. Who go in the streets and sell in the streets, and they are they show off what they have, and they show off so that you can buy it, and then you go home. You you don't have any what they show. 
I remember when I was little, I would、uh, walk in the streets with my parents, and when we saw、uh, they were selling a little boat, and、uh, if you put it on in the water, you don't need any power at all; it just runs on its own. And so they saw that it was pretty nice, so they bought it for us, and it was just like that.、Uh, we put it in, but then we put it in the water, and it didn't run. I don't know what they have, what scheme they had, or whatever, but it, it cost the the boat to go around. I don't know how it worked, but somehow when we went home, it did not work. That is what it is to be evil. That is, you boast about it, and yet it is not truly so. This is the arrogance of a person who says that I can take care of my life and don't need God. They say, I am one that has the. Uh, power, the ability. I can do it. I don't need anything. If I can work at it, for sure, I will be rich. You know, everything is in God's hands, not in our hands. He tells us, yes, rely on the Lord and work, and yes, we will be successful if we place ourselves under the will of God. Not that we want God to do our will, but we need to ask God's will. And do accordingly, and God will give to us His blessings in our life. We see that there are people like Nebuchadnezzar, who was very proud of his his life. He said, "Is this not the Bab- great Babylon which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my Majesty?" He was one of. Great success, right? And power, and he was very proud of his ability and power. He had built a great Babylon, but the word of God continues in Daniel four thirty one. The words have not stopped、uh, coming、uh, when he has not stopped spo- speak spoken. A word from heaven came and say, "You will be cast out of human race, and you will live amongst the animals of the fields, and you will eat from the." Grass of the fields for seven years, that and at the end you will acknowledge that I am great and Almighty God, and He I give according to my will. And at that time, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar was cast out, and he ate grass as cows until his hair grew as、uh, fur, and his nails were like those of a bird's. And after seven years, God、um, restored him, and in the end, He said, "Only Jehovah God is the Almighty God, and He is sovereign over all." That's what He said in the end. There's another person in history, Napoleon. Napoleon was a great warrior, but his pride has caused has led him to failure. He wanted to、um, conquer, I believe, Russia. Not sure about the nation, but his friend、uh, was committed to say that you will not be able to do it. And his friend said, "Men propose, but God dispose." Men propose, but God dispose. But when he heard this, he was very angry, and he yelled out, "I am the one that planned, and I will make it succeed, and I will succeed." And there was a past. A, 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 a lawyer or a pastor said that listen to the words of Napoleon and he will fail. He took four hundred thousand soldiers to fight against Russia, but he had committed a small fault. That is, the the hoof of the horse. There was special hoof for the winter, and different one for the summer. But when he went to Russia, he kept on the hoofs、uh, for the summer, and so for the four hundred thousand men died because they died of sort of starvation, because the soldier, the horses could not bring them food, so they all died. 
he was very proud and arrogant, saying that I have the power to do this, and did not submit to the will of God. And so the Lord allowed him to fail greatly. The spirit that we should have is to submit to the Lord. Of course, those who do not have the Lord, they do not have the Lord in the plans of the future. And oftentimes, we are tempted to live according to people in this world, and we need to. And we need to be careful so that we don't proclaim like the people in the world. I will do this. I will do that, and I will succeed. But no. I will not that we say that, but we have to say, I will do what God wants me to do, and I will be faithful in what I do, and God will bless me with the success according to His will, totally relying on Him. If God tells us to me to do it, then I will do it, and He will allow the results. A missionary, in fact, he served his the Lord as a missionary for his whole life. And through his whole life, nobody came to know the Lord. But the results of his life, nobody could even imagine. At the end of his life, he only influenced a small number of people for the work of the Lord. And David Livingston, another missionary, he went to Africa. He gave sacrificed his whole life to translate the Bible. I'm sorry, to study the Bible and prepare the dictionary and all that. But in the end of his life. Only one person came to know the Lord, but he was faithful to the work that the Lord gave to him. And today, the uh, gospel of Christ has gone to Africa through the faithfulness of one man. And the Lord say, "We must do all is in God's hands, and we must do it according to His word." Oftentimes, we are tempted to live as people in this world to be arrogant, saying that we have the power, we have the ability. That we can build it all from our two hands, and you know what? Anyone who say that the Lord will let you, maybe、uh, many years without a work, because to know that it is not by our own ability, but by what God has given to us. God loves us, and He will allow us to face difficult times that we cannot even resolve those problems. To let us see that we. Our arrogance is evil, and our boasting is evil. And then we need to submit to the Lord because that is the good thing to do. The word of God in verse seventeen: so Whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for Him, it is sin. What is the good, right thing to do here, or the good thing to do? Is to submit to the Lord, to yield our future to the fu- to the Lord. And so the word so. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So we know what is good and the right thing to do. So we must do. And so this principle is used for all aspects of our lives, right? We know what is right. We must do. And we, if we don't do it, then we sin against the Lord. We know that we must pray for our brothers and sisters. And if we do not pray, then we have sinned. And we know that we are to love and help those. In need, and yet we do not know do it. Then we sin. This is what I just、uh, want to remind you ahead of time. We know that the hurricane will come to Haiti and Jamaica, and there we they are very poor. So I, by the Lord,、um, rely on the Lord. Encourage you to not spend so much money. You know, instead of going to lunch or whatever or dinner,、uh, spending. Fifty hundred dollars.、Um, save that money up to help those charities to to help those that will be facing the the hurricane. So we need to think about other people. God has His plan. We will pray, but He will allow the rain and the sun on the righteous as well as the evil. So we know that God is sovereign over all. The Word of God teaches us that when we know what is good and right, and we do not do it, then we sin. 
But the word of God lets us see that if we do not love people, then we also have sinned. There are many other points that I can share with you at this moment. But I'd like to conclude here, because our life is very short and passing. Let us not be arrogant and boasting about our self-dependence, but we need to submit to the sovereign.